Welcome to the Scott County Public Library's Summer Reading Program for the Preschool Age Group. My name is Miss Lily and this is my friend Puss in Boots. We have a lot of fun things planned for you guys today. First, we will hear a story about Jack and the Beanstalk. And then we will make our very own beanstalk. Now, let's hear our story. Once upon a time, there lived a woman and her son, Jack, on their small farm in the country. Every day, Jack would help his mother with the chores, chopping the wood, weeding the garden, and milking the cow. But despite all their hard work, Jack and his mother were very poor, with barely enough money to keep themselves fed. What shall we do? What shall we do? said the widow one spring day. We don't have enough money to buy seed for the farm this year. We must sell our cow, Old Bess, and with the money buy enough seed to plant a good crop. All right, mother, said Jack. It's market day today. I'll go into town and sell Bessie. So Jack took the cow's halter in his hand, walked through the garden gate, and headed off toward town. He hadn't gone far when he met a funny-looking old man who said to him, "'Good morning, Jack.' "'Good morning to you,' said Jack, wondering how the little old man knew his name. "'Where are you off to this fine morning?' asked the man. "'I'm going to market to sell our cow Bessie.' "'Well, what a helpful son you are!' exclaimed the man. "'I have a special deal for such a good boy like you.' The little old man looked around to make sure no one was watching, and then opened his hand to show Jack what he held. "'Beans?' asked Jack, looking a little confused. Three magical beans. Seeds, to be exact, young man. One, two, three. So magical are they that if you plant them overnight, by morning they'll grow right up to the sky,' promised the funny little man. And because you're such a good boy, they're all yours and trade for that old milking cow. Really? said Jack. And you're quite sure they're magical? I am indeed. And if it doesn't turn out to be true, you can have your cow back. Well, that sounds fair, said Jack, as he handed over Bessie's halter, pocketed the beans, and headed back home to show his mother. Back already, Jack? asked his mother. I see you haven't got old Bess. You've sold her so quickly. How much did you give for her? Jack smiled and reached into his pocket. Just look at these beans, mother. They're magical. Plant them overnight and... What? cried his mother. Oh, silly boy, how could you have given away our milking cow for three measly beans? And with that, she did the worst thing Jack had ever seen her do. She burst into tears. Jack ran upstairs to his little room in the attic. So sorry he was, and threw the beans angrily out the window, thinking, How could I have been so foolish? I've broken my mother's heart. After much tossing and turning, at last Jack dropped off to sleep. When Jack woke up the next morning, his room looked strange. The sun was shining into part of it like it normally did, and yet all of the rest was quite dark and shady. So Jack jumped up and dressed himself and went to the window. And what do you think he saw? Why, the beans he had thrown out of the window into the garden had sprung up into a big beanstalk, which went up and up and up until it reached to the sky. Using the leaves and twisty vines like the rungs of a ladder, Jack climbed and climbed until at last he reached the sky, and when he got there he found a long, broad road winding its way through the clouds to a tall, square castle off in the distance. Jack ran up the road toward the castle, and just as he reached it, the door swung open to reveal a horrible lady giant. As soon as Jack saw her, he turned to run away, but she caught him and dragged him into the castle. Don't be in such a hurry. I'm sure a growing boy like you would like a nice big breakfast, said the great, big, tall woman, 
It's been so long since I've got to make breakfast for a boy. Well, the lady giant wasn't such a bad sort after all, even if she was a bit odd. She took Jack into the kitchen and gave him a chunk of cheese and a glass of milk. But Jack had only taken a few bites when thump, thump, thump. The whole house began to tremble with the noise of someone coming. Goodness gracious me, it's my husband, said the giant woman, wringing her hands. What on earth shall I do? There's nothing he likes better than boys broiled on toast, and I haven't any bread left. Oh dear, I never should have let you stay for breakfast. Here, come quick and jump in here and she hurried Jack into a large copper pot sitting beside the stove, just as her husband giant came in. He ducked inside the kitchen and said, I'm ready for breakfast. I'm so hungry I could eat three cows. Ah, oh, what's that I smell? Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll have his bones to grind my bread. Nonsense, dear, said his wife. We haven't had a boy for breakfast in years. Now you go and wash up, and by the time you come back, your breakfast will be ready for you. So the giant went off to tidy up. Jack was about to make a run for it when the woman stopped him. Wait until he's asleep, she said. He always has a little snooze after breakfast. Jack peeked out of the copper pot just as the giant returned to the kitchen carrying a basket filled with golden eggs and a sickly looking white hen. The giant poked the hen and growled, Lay, and the hen laid an egg made of gold which the giant added to the basket. After his breakfast, the giant went to the closet and pulled out a golden harp with the face of a sad young girl. The giant poked the harp and growled, play. Then the harp began to play a gentle tune while her lovely face sang a lullaby. Then the giant began to nod his head and to snore until the house shook. When he was quite sure the giant was asleep, Jack crept out of the copper pot and began to tiptoe out of the kitchen. Just as he was about to leave, he heard the sound of the harp girl weeping. Jack bit his lip, sighed, and returned to the kitchen. He grabbed the sickly hen and the singing harp and began to tiptoe back out. But this time the hen gave a cackle, which woke the giant. And just as Jack got out of the house, he heard him calling, Wife! Wife! What have you done with my white hen and my golden harp? Jack ran as fast as he could, and the giant, realizing he had been tricked, came rushing after, away from the castle and down the broad, winding road. When he got to the beanstalk, the giant was only twenty yards away. When suddenly he saw Jack disappear, confused, the giant peered through the clouds and saw Jack underneath, climbing down for dear life. The giant stomped his foot and roared angrily. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll have his bones to grind my bread. The giant swung himself down onto the beanstalk, which shook with his weight. Jack slipped and slid and climbed down the beanstalk as quickly as he could, and after him climbed the giant. As he neared the bottom, Jack called out, Mother, please, hurry, bring me an axe, bring me an axe. And his mother came rushing out with Jack's wood chopping axe in her hand. But when she came to the enormous beanstalk, she stood stock still with fright. Jack jumped down, got a hold of the axe, and began to chop away at the beanstalk. Luckily, because of all the chores he'd done over the years, he'd become quite good at chopping and it didn't take long for him to chop through enough of the beanstalk that it began to teeter. The giant felt the beanstalk shake and quiver, so he stopped to see what was the matter. Then Jack gave one last big chop with the axe, and the beanstalk began to topple over. 
Then the giant fell down and broke his crown, and the beanstalk came tumbling after. The singing harp thanked Jack for rescuing her from the giant. She had hated being locked up in the closet all day and night, and had wanted nothing more than to sit in the farmhouse window and sing to the birds and the butterflies in the sunshine. With a bit of patience and his mother's help, it didn't take long for Jack to get the sickly hen back in good health, and the grateful hen continued to lay a fresh golden egg every day. Jack used the money from selling the golden eggs to buy back old Bess, purchase seed for the spring crop, and to fix up his mother's farm. He even had enough left over to invite every one of his neighbors over for a nice meal complete with music from the singing harp. And so Jack, his mother, old Bess, the golden harp, and the white hen lived happily ever after. The End now, how about we make our very own beanstalk? You can either use a sheet of paper that is green or a paper plate painted green. You will also need a piece of string and a pair of scissors and some glue. Parents, this craft is also a little tricky, but there are different pieces that the child can help with. First, if you're going to use the paper plate, start by painting your plate green. You will want to paint the front side and the back side. Once your paper plate is dry, trace a spiral for you to cut along. Once you've finished cutting all the way around, you should have one long continuous piece. Next, make yourself some little leaves and attach them around the spiral with some glue. To finish your beanstalk, tie some string to the top of the spiral or the center of the plate. Then hang it from the ceiling or a wall and then you will have your beanstalk. If you are using a sheet of paper instead of the paper plate, trace a circle on your paper as big as you can get it. Now that you have your circular shape on your piece of paper, cut along your line and then you will have a circle. With your circle, trace a spiral pattern starting from the outer edge and working your way in towards the middle. Then cut along this spiral to form your beanstalk. You should end up with one continuous loop like this. Next, make some leaves and attach them along the spiral using some glue. To finish your beanstalk, Add some string to the top of the spiral or the center of your circle. Then hang it from the ceiling or a wall and you will have your finished beanstalk. Did you enjoy our craft today? How about you, Puss in Boots? Can you tell everyone bye, Puss in Boots? See you guys again next week. Don't forget to enter in for our drawing. You can email me at lily, L-I-L-L-Y, at scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, dot L-I-B, dot I-N, dot U-S. Just send us a picture of you doing our craft or watching our video, and we'll enter you in for a prize drawing. Bye!